If you feel like you're walking through a valley today and it feels like you've been there a long time, you may be lost, no. Then you may be asking, where is God? Does he see what I'm going through? Doesn't he care? Yes, he does see and he does care. And not only that, he has provided a rescue, a rescue plan. Stay tuned today and you'll find out how to experience victory in times of trouble. That's coming up next as Arkansas Live starts right now. <clears throat> you know, I quoted this to you the other day, but I'd like to read it to you right now. Uh, we're talking about um, experiencing victory in times of trouble. Uh, we know we're living in times of trouble. The Bible says we are. Jesus said these are the beginning of sorrows. Jesus said uh, in the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. We know there's trouble out there. Um, we've written songs about it, um, not only in the church, but in the world. Yeah, a lot of our old church songs. Oh, I'm, over, I'm down in the valley, up on the mountain, back and forth. And, and people adopt this as a way of thinking and a way of life, when in reality, uh, the Bible says that these things are uh, just for a short time. Uh, and Jesus has already provided a way out and a way over. But here's what I quoted the other day. Let me read it to you out of 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but as such as is common um, put to man. In other words, this is common to humanity because of Adam's transgression, Adam's sin against God, this trouble, this condemnation, this guilt, this stress and distress all came on the human race because of one man. It eventually concludes in physical death, but it began with spiritual death, separation from God. So this is common to man. He said, there's no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. So you're not, you know, the only one experiencing trouble. He says, God is faithful, though, who will not allow you to be tempted above that that you are able to. And if you read other translations or expanded or amplified versions, it says he will not allow you to be tempted above that, that you are able to deal with, but will with the temptation make the way for you to escape it that you may deal with it. So here's the good news. The good side of this is that God has already made a way for you to escape this. And that way is through Jesus Christ. He's, he's the one that has um, solidified your deliverance and your, your um, getting out of the way of this trouble, getting delivered. Now, let's go over to um, 2 Timothy and let's read again chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. This know also that in the last days, and we're in the last days now, the last days of the church age, the last days of the uh, age of grace, the last days of Jesus Christ, perilous times shall come. Here again, he's telling you, these things are going to happen. And then he tells you some of the things that you and I are going to face. Perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of their own selves. Self-gratification. Proud. Um, covetous. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Without natural affection. That statement right there refers to uh, perversion. It refers to abortion um, without natural affection. And, and you, you know, we, we can see some of these things in the scriptures. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, 
high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Then he tells us to stay away from that. You, you, should, you should be very choosy, selective as to who you are friends with. You should be very selective to the church that you attend. If they deny the power of God, if they just have a form of godliness, a ritualistic form, but they don't believe in the power of the Holy Ghost, they don't believe in signs, wonders, miracles, then you probably need to find another church. You need to find a group of people, a body that you can fit into. But of course, there are people that like it that way. They don't, <laughs> they don't want any manifestations of the Holy Ghost. Uh, they, it scares them or they think it's wildfire or uh, blasphemous, uh, you know, um, heresy, heretical, fanatical. So there are people that choose, you know, um, a form of godliness. That's, that's what they prefer. But then the, the scripture says, turn away from that. You should want to be where the spirit of Christ is. You should want to be where the anointing of the Holy Spirit is. Now, granted, you know, there are all kinds of uh, things that go on in the name of spirituality. I'm not saying that everything that happens in the name of Holy Ghost or spirituality or prophetic or gifts of the Spirit, signs, wonders, and miracles. I'm not saying everything is of God because you can plainly see in the Bible, especially in Paul's writing to the Corinthian church where there was disorder, there was confusion, there was sin, uh, there, were, there was abuse or misuse of the gifts. I mean, you, you know, you can see this. I, I, when I got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, I was a totally different person, I, but I was so ignorant and so innocent. I just thought everybody that went to church loved God like I did. I just thought every church was the same. I even thought that every full gospel church was the same. Boy, did I find out differently. Just because it has full gospel on the outside doesn't mean it's full gospel on the inside. And so I had to realize, and my wife helped me a lot with this because it was a shock to me. And, and let me just go back and say this. When I got saved, of course, some of you know my testimony. I was saved at the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville, Tennessee, the old Ryman Auditorium downtown in Nashville. And I got saved at the first radio program, Grand Ole Gospel Time, Pastor Jimmy Snow, Johnny Cash, June Carter, Connie Smith. They were all guests. And that's why I went because I enjoyed country music and I went to hear uh, them sing and Johnny gave his testimony, et cetera. Well, that's what drew me. So I just, I just assumed that, man, this is all these people that were on the show. I mean, they had the uh, Oak Ridge Boys. They had Chris Christopherson. They, and these were people that we got to meet and we were backstage. We, we, we got to meet some of these people in Roy Acuff's dressing room. I mean, that's when he was still alive. And, you know, I just thought, wow, this is awesome. We went after I got saved, my wife and son and I, we started traveling and singing in the music ministry. That's what God called us to do at first. And we did a lot of the gospel singings uh, around Arkansas and then in other states. And then on my 20 year anniversary uh, of salvation, they invited us back to the Opry to sing on the Sunday night Opry. Now, I, like I say, I was really innocent and ignorant of all these things. And I just thought everybody that sang gospel music just loved Jesus like I did. And I thought, oh, my Lord, I began to see some things. <laughs> one, one group, and I won't mention their names, we were rehearsing. Uh, we were all singing on the Sunday Night Opry that night, and we were backstage rehearsing. And uh, I heard this one group uh, in, the, in the back room rehearsing and practicing and they were not just rehearsing the song they were practicing their moves 